Welcome back to the channel, everybody. We are out on the Spokane River, right outside of downtown Spokane. And uh, we're out here to clear up a couple of things that I see happening time and time again. And that would be mistaken identity of rocks. So we're gonna walk down this big gravel bar out here. And uh, we're gonna look at some rocks and talk about some of the different things that we're gonna find and uh, some of the mistakes that people make with some of the identification. Take some of these rocks home, cut them up, and look at what's on the inside. It's quite the stick, like. Uh... So right away, you're gonna see when you come out to the Spokane, a lot of what you're gonna see out here is gonna be granite and all these uh, plain gray ones. They're all basalt. You also see some granites that have more pink in them. Yeah, well, just like that one, but that one's frozen into the ground. And one thing that I wanna get out is that guy right there. There we go. Okay. So you can kind of see we have some lines on this. These, often, very often, get mistaken for being petrified wood. Oh, hey. Yeah, I mean, I can see... Oh, that's really... Yeah, I can't. <laughs> Nothing's coming. <laughs> you got to get everything out with a hammer. We're definitely uh, a little frozen in place here. But, yeah, let's, uh, let's get that guy out. I don't know. It's so frozen. Oh, there we go. It's got some nice, cool lines in it, though. Yeah, here, let's see it. So, a lot of these rocks are going to be argillite. And this argillite comes from the Belt Supergroup. So if you go upstream from Spokane, that's uh, one of the types of rocks that come out of that unit. So it's like one, I think it was 1.4 to... 1.1 billion years old and you know i can kind of get why somebody would see this see the lines in it and uh, think petrified wood um, i think generally speaking a lot of people don't spend a whole lot of time thinking about sedimentary rocks yeah i mean you can definitely see how a person would look at that and be like the banding and the banding in a tree yeah we have some black petrified wood that yeah, Looks yeah, absolutely. So uh, there's definitely black carbonized petrified wood. Walk down here a little bit. At one point I saw on probably on Facebook or something like that, somebody saying that they find hundreds of different pieces of petrified wood out here in the Spokane. And I just don't think that's possible. Now, it's entirely possible that there's isolated individual pieces. It's also an option that there's rocks that people dumped in this. A prime example of that would be at one point I saw a thing where somebody had found a number of sepitarian nodules from Utah in the Spokane. So clearly somebody took some of the rocks that they have and they brought them down here and they, they dumped them off. So we want to eliminate any possibility of confusion here. And, uh, well, here, here's a good example of something. See, I mean, definitely has lines going through it. Some of the other rocks that you'll find out here, you know, obviously your pieces of quartz. There's some, like, low-tier jaspers. Um, you can also find quartz with small amounts of chromium in it. So it's a little like a piece of adventuring, but it doesn't necessarily have the little bits of mica in it that kind of create that like a classic adventuring look. Yeah. I do think it's quite valuable though to spend some time uh, learning about some of the area's geology and metamorphic and sedimentary rocks so that you're just kind of a general baseline for all the different things that you might come into contact with. Because even though like 
everything here in Spokane is alluvial and left by the Missoula floods. We have a lot of stuff upstream from here that you're gonna maybe come into contact with. <clears throat> really into the sticks today. Frozen. Don't fall, don't fall in the water. It's cold. Ugh. There we go. Yeah, I mean, I could see how you look at that and be like, that's a, a knot. So I think one of the problems that people have with this type of material is the usage of Google Lens and rock identification apps that people run on their phones where you take a picture of it and it just tells you what it thinks it is based upon a comparative algorithm or something. So I think it'd be fun, these rocks that I'm picking up, when we take them back to the shop, we will test out those apps and I'm willing to bet almost anything that it's gonna say petrified wood. I don't know for sure, but I feel like they're all gonna say petrified wood. And in reality, your phone does not have the ability to do proper rock and mineral identification. It just doesn't. That's not a feature of modern technology. Um, the amount of false positives that it's gonna give you is gonna be high and you're not even gonna know. You're just gonna assume that it's right. And that's just not, not how that works. But we'll test them out. Maybe they've gotten better in the past, what, year and a half since I checked them out. Is that a piece of asphalt? Yes. It's so rounded. You have a piece of urbanite here. I feel like I'm gonna twist an ankle being in here. It's like some of the rocks are frozen in place and they don't move when you step on them. And then other ones, not so much. Pretty out. Beginning of February right now. I think I have enough rocks to be able to go back, we'll do some testing, like I said, Google Lens, all of that stuff, some cutting, some proper identification work, and uh, see what these things actually are. What do you think? Do we find hundreds and hundreds of pieces of petrified wood today? No, uh, <laughs> no. So I took these, uh, these rocks, right? and I uh, put them into Google Lens, and the results that it gave me are definitely not helpful, okay? It's like a Fairburn agate, fossils, petrified wood, just uh, driftwood, I think, was one of them, and it's just not beneficial to use things like that. The rocked, or not rock, the rock identification app, whatever it's going by nowadays, similar in that, um, it gives so many results, even when you see the other suggestions for something, that uh, nobody picks sedimentary rock, right? Like, nobody that's using rock identification apps picks sedimentary or uh, metamorphic type rocks. They're going to pick fossils, agates, petrified wood. That's what people are going to be picking, not the basic stuff, even though the basic stuff is really common. So I got my uh, saw all ready to go here and uh, we'll nip the ends off of these and look at what's on the inside. These are the three rocks that I cut. That's what they look like on the outside and the inside. So, obviously, they are quite rough after coming off of the saw. So, a little bit of water helps to bring out some of the details since they're not polished or anything like that. Clearly, one of these uh, stands out from the rest. <laughs> the rest, the other two. So, what is missing here with these? How can we determine that these either are petrified wood 
or are not petrified wood. Well, the easiest way to kind of rule out petrified wood, because petrified wood is minerals moving in and replacing the organic material cell by cell. And usually, at least in the Pacific Northwest, that's with silicates. So using a mineral hardness test kit, we can very quickly determine uh, a, a base level hardness of these. And these have a hardness between two and three on the Mohs hardness scale. So right away, you know, rule out these being petrified wood. But there's other visual things that we can do. Uh, th these two um, clearly stand out as argillite, argillite, doesn't matter. Uh, this is another type of silt mudstone that I'm not exactly familiar, you know, who knows what it is, but that's what it is. These two, here is a piece of it in its uh, non-river tumbled state, and you can kind of see what we have going on here now. We're uh, kind of a uh, kind of similar. I mean, you can kind of see the similarities between them. This is kind of uh, looking at it in that orientation. So you're looking at the lines kind of exaggerated based upon the angle. And you can see how this was put down in uh, layers, which is kind of cool. Well, let's compare it to some known petrified wood samples and we can start to see some of the differences. This piece came out of the Yellowstone River in Montana. And you can see very clear, distinctive, uniform banding that is also concentric. So, I mean, this would be like, you know, coming out of the tree, the trees growing up that way and uh, going down that way. So we have the rings of the tree very clear in that. We do not have rings or even really uniform cell structure in any of these. Here's a piece where I can see how maybe you'd get confused, okay? This came from uh, the Hollywood Ranch in Southern Oregon, and you can see very clear, distinctive bands tree growth rings in that. And lastly, we have a very rough piece from Saddle Mountain in Washington. Very clear, distinctive bands of wood. These are very hard rocks uh, between a six and a seven on the Mohs scale. Um, and they come from known localities versus unknown localities and localities where upstream we have no petrified wood deposits. So I hope this helps. I hope, uh, you know, we kind of maybe shed some light on some of these rocks. I mean, you can still look at them, enjoy them and be like, they're cool. They have neat colors, kind of grays. You know, you can look at these and, and do that, but just know that they're not petrified wood and that's okay. I hope you found this to be helpful. If you did, if you want to subscribe, throw a thumbs up on the video. I got tons and tons, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other rock related videos here on the channel, as well as website, currently rockcounty.com. And go check it out. There's a lot of good stuff there. Uh, you know, it's not just like your general uh, YouTuber promotion website. There's a lot of uh, content, articles, locations, you name it. It's all up there. All right, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming, hanging out with me down on the river, and I'll catch you on the next video.